hello everyone so in this video we are just going to see about the j1939 protocol and how it is used in the heavy vehicles okay so what is j1939 it's also a automotive engineers it's a rule or set of standards developed by sae and uh, it's the connector how the j1939 connector looks like and it having various nodes it's having 29 bit identifier which is described with the can 2b protocol the j1939 also provides a higher layer protocol which is based on the can physical layer okay the key facts about j1939 are it's used in heavy duty vehicles and it uses 29 bit extended can identifier developed by the society of automotive engineers the bit rate is 250 kilobits or 500 kilobits the higher layer protocol built on can uses the uh, twisted pair wire okay the j1939 signals are called suspect parameter numbers spn that is the format j1939 message format the first three bits of the identifier used to control priority here you can see the priority first three bits for priority and one is reserved and the data page goes to one and the pdu format have eight and the pdu specific is eight and the source address is eight coming to the pgn parameter group number and the spn suspect parameter number these two are very important in j1939 protocol so the pgn can be further broken into two four parts data page reserved pdu format and pdu specific okay the suspect parameter number is the identifier for the can signals that are contained in the data bytes suspect parameter numbers are grouped up by parameter group numbers they can be described based on their bit start position offset unit and the bit length we have a separate dbc file for j1939 standards and it's used to decode data across all the heavy duty vehicles okay so the conversion of the vehicle data will be around 40 to 60 percentage okay so j1939 request message um so these are all some of the request messages and the j1939 connector we can see how it is starting from a and ending with j and these corresponds to the uh, pins battery minus battery plus like that So this is the trans, uh, transport protocol J1939. So coming to the important point, like how does the J1939 uh, transport protocol work? Now we are going to take a closer look at the process called J1939 transport protocol. The J1939 protocol defines how to deconstruct, transfer and reassemble packets across frames. Okay, the broadcast announce message, BAM, that is designed for an entire network. The connection mode that is designed for a specific device. Okay, let's imagine a scenario where transmitting is you will send an initial broadcast message to arrange a data transfer. The BAM will definitely define the PGN identifier for the multi packet message, number of data bytes and packets to be sent. Afterwards, it is being followed up by 255 packets of data, and each of the 255 packets uses the first data byte in order to define the sequence number. So 255 into 7 is equal to 1785 bytes. There are multiple common applications when it coming to logging of uh, J1939 data. We will mention four of the most common applications below. Okay, so commonly used in heavy duty vehicles and logging J1939 data and uh, to do real time diagnostics on vehicles. And another example is that vehicles can be monitored via Wi Fi CAN loggers, which gives them possibility to predict breakdowns with the help of J1939 data. And then it can also be used as a vehicle black box. Okay, so this is the history of J1939 starting from 1994, 2000 and 2001. Okay, you can see the map uh, here, road map of this history. Thanks for watching.